Theo Padnos is an American who was held hostage by the Al-Nusra Front, that's Al-Qaeda, in Syria for two years. It's an experience which I think most of us find almost incomprehensible. But I want to talk to him about his ordeal, what he went through, but also his thoughts on Syria, its terrible plight, and where now for that country and the Middle East. You were an aspiring journalist. Right. And you were looking for editors to right. take you on. Yes, and definitely. you went to a border town, didn't you, in Turkey? You went to Antakya, That's probably right. pronouncing it wrong, aren't I? You were pinging off emails. Do yes. you explain, so explain, explain what happened? No, I said, listen, I have some very interesting stories here. There's this happening, there's this happening, there's this happening. And they said, who are you? We're not interested, go away. And so I said, fine, I'll do it on my own. I decided that I would go into Syria without a commission. I knew this was stupid, but I did that anyway. There had been a um, video made. In this video, an Al-Qaeda guy says, we announced from here, it was in July of 2012, we announced from here, the foundation of the Islamic State. They were ripping down the signs of Bashar al-Assad, they had the black flag. I watched this video, and I said, that's it, a tiny, tiny little unrepresentative group of fanatics, and most of the revolution are these lovely sweethearts I'm going to go hang out with. So all the signs were there. Um, and I didn't read them. Can you explain the moment you were kidnapped? I had uh, made friends in Antakya with three young men. When we crossed the border, we were joined by a fourth. We drove through this little town of Binish, and now I know is a very dangerous place, had a coffee there, drove maybe a kilometer outside of the town, we found an abandoned house. There was video cameras set up in this place because they videotape everything they do, and they wanted to have a record of taking their stupid American hostage into custody. And they came at me with like, cudgels and cables whack, 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 and handcuffs, actually handcuffs like this, tied up my legs, and they go, Anta Asirna, you are a prisoner. What was racing through your mind when this happened? Shit, mm -hmm. I really fucked up here. They kept me handcuffed to the leader of the group. During the night, I kept drinking water so that I would have to pee, so that they would kind of get used to letting me out of the handcuffs. After they did the dawn prayer, they put the handcuffs back on in such a way so that I, I could s slip out of them. Mm -hmm. So I slipped out of the handcuffs, there's a guy sleeping here with a gun, a guy sleeping here with a gun, and a guy in the next room with a gun. And I stepped over their bodies, one by one by one, I opened the door really, really quietly, like a spirit, and I flew out of the door. When they caught me, they were like, he knows how to undo handcuffs. He learned all this psychology of how to trick the kidnappers from the CIA. And they're like, tell us how you did it. And while they were having me give them the CIA course in how to evade your kidnappers, I was handcuffed to a sort of like a crucifix or something, mm -hmm. and here like this, handcuff here, handcuff here, and they were hitting with cables. Did you think at that moment you were gonna, you were gonna die? I was on a, a, like a kind of a terrace, and somebody was digging in a field um, next to me, and they were like, that's, you hear that? That's your grave that's being dug. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, well, I guess I should, you know, this is it. Uh, whatever you want, I'll, I'll give it to you, and then let's go on with the thing. I didn't wanna, I knew that they were having fun, mm -hmm. and I wanted their fun to be over with. I mean, the sorts of torture they use, they use cattle prods, didn't they? They use some of that, yeah. The stuff that draws blood is more painful than the electricity. The electricity you could recover from, like right away. But the um, stuff that drew blood and that, uh, like they were breaking bones here. And that didn't, you don't recover from that. And you know they're gonna do it again the next day. It's really the, the worst, everybody says it, and it's true, is the psychological aspect, because you don't know where they're gonna take you with this thing. They don't know when it's going to stop. The pain of torture is in the psychological terror. It makes it more painful. If you, if you know you're going to get out, you're like, I can deal with this till they let me go. But you don't know. They you often spoke about killing you, didn't they? In quite <laughs> graphic detail. Yeah, they did. They said, we've killed, in, in Bosnia, we killed them this way. This is what we did. We would cut them, we cut, their, cut their legs first, and we cut them a little bit higher up next. They said, we, we're going to roast your skin. Rahneshwi <laughs> jildek. Like a, it's barbecue. We'll barbecue your skin. Every day, did you wake up thinking today there's a vacant chance? No. I, um, there were days when I said, I, I think I'm going to make it through this day because they were nice. The guy gave me like three, mm. three apples. That means they like me. That means I'm going to be okay. The next day, no apples and no food. And I'm like, they're going to kill me. They were adamant you were a spy. You obviously weren't a spy. They were adamant at first. And after a while, they stopped bringing this up. Mm -hmm. But they have a, a wider notion of spy than we do. Mm -hmm. Their notion of spy is somebody who brings information mm -hmm. to um, their masters in the West. Mm -hmm. Now, a journalist fits that definition. Mm -hmm. It's a simple chain of logic to get from where you are now to you should be killed. You're just a journalist, now you should be killed. It takes them like two steps of logic. You said at night sometimes when you, you'd be lying there, you would say your farewells to your mother. 
there came a time when I felt that I could beat them at this game of getting information out of me and torturing my body um, by killing myself. That this was my way out. And so I said, I, I, I'll, I'll do it so you guys don't have to. And it'll be easier and better. But I couldn't physically b do it. You know, I couldn't work the mechanics of it. Mm -hmm. So I, d I wasn't able to. You know, the, I, I'm happy. If I had had like a cyanide pill or a gun or anything like that, I'm sure I'd be dead. You said that you know, for a long period you realized you were just under the control of sadists, a bunch of sadists. No, Who's I don't think that they... Uh, I, I thought about this carefully because I listened to so much torture and I don't think that they enjoyed it. They called it work. You know, they, they would tell me when people were screaming, uh, the commander would say, you hear this screaming? The guy's saying, la, 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 la. People are hanging from the pipes like this, screaming, screaming, screaming. The commander says to me, I'm lying on the ground, he goes, this is our music. We don't have music. This is our music. It, it is, uh, um, you know, they feel that by punishing the people who are the enemies of the religion, they are vindicating their cause and bringing their own membership closer to God. It's not pleasure. It's more complicated. It's more, uh, you know, it's more religious. If it was just pleasure, they would have young kids and they're laughing and having a good time. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not the way, it's men with beards. Mm -hmm instructing the young kids what to do. At one point you escaped whilst taking out the rubbish. Yeah, at this point they, they had let me out of prison. Mm -hmm. And I was traveling through the desert with them and I had kind of gained their confidence and trust enough to travel with them. Mm -hmm. You know, everywhere was ISIS. And when there wasn't ISIS, there was only desert. But one day um, it seemed like if I run to a neutral place like a hospital, perhaps they will um, rescue me. And, and But they, they, as soon as I got there, they're like, okay, sit down, sit down, we'll take care of your problem. I said, I'm a BBC reporter. How about Irish? Irish BBC reporter. And they go, BBC, good. And they called up the Al-Qaeda people. Hey, you're a dumb American. He's down here. <laughs> Come pick him up. God. Looking back at the period of captivity, what were the things that kept you going? The reason why I'm alive is because they didn't kill me. Mm -hmm. And if they don't kill you, you survive. There was no like, determination psychologically to hang on, hang on, hang on. It was I survived because they didn't kill me. The day you were released? I was delighted. For months afterwards. How did they, how did they tell you, though? The... Big Al-Qaeda chief came into the room. He goes, we're sending you back to your mama today. When you heard those words, could you I believe I thought it, it was, no. I, I know this guy very well, and I knew that, uh, you know, 90% of what he says is a lie. A few weeks earlier, he said, I'm going to execute you by my own hand mm -hmm. right now. And that didn't happen. So when he told me I'm a, you're going to be free, I also didn't believe him. When it was clear you were being released, it wasn't a lie. Yeah. What was going through your head at that moment? You'd been... In, in captivity for about two years of your life. Right. And the Al Nusra front, Al Qaeda in Iraq. How I did wasn't you feel prepared. Moment? I mean, psychologically, I was not prepared. You know, you so steel yourself against aggression in these kinds of circumstances. You don't want to let the, this emotional barbed wire you have erected around yourself, mm. but it collapsed in an instant. And suddenly I was just in tears on the floor in this UN truck. Did you believe it was real? Did it take you a while? No, to it, it was very surreal. I had, a, you know, maybe 24 hours of like, this isn't really happening. But I knew it was happening. It was similar to going in, you know? When I went in, mm. I'm like, this cannot be real. When you look back at your captors, how do you feel about them? Hatred, pity, fear? No, I'm, you know, they're carrying out an agenda that they, um, their agenda is to provide guns and weapons and cash to mm. the Mujahideen until the end of time. They say they wish to create a, uh, an alternative form of social um, governance. However, what I think they want is to perpetual jihad. Mm -hmm. Because they're having a wonderful time, and the jihad is a lot of fun. Do you think, looking back, what we saw in the early parts was a genuine revolution of people who wanted democracy and freedom that was hijacked by Islamist terrorist organizations? No, I don't see that. I don't see that. That is the conventional narrative. That's what people believe. Many mm -hmm. people who participated in these demonstrations believe that that is what happened. The ISIS people with whom I was in jail said, no, no, we came first. You know, it's very important for them, for those people to say, this is a movement that comes from Islam. It doesn't come from love of democracy. That's not what they want. Hmm. They say, we were here first. We were the leaders of this thing. So much of the incentive or initiative for the West to support the revolutionaries is because we say Bashar al-Assad started it. But the revolutionaries themselves say, no, no, we started it. Hmm. Are there any rebels in Syria today who you believe... Of course, they're lovely, plenty of lovely rebels, of course. Go and find them. How will you find them? How will you determine if they're lovely? Yeah. 
you know, you have to live with them for years and years and years to determine if they're reliable. And what we really want out of the rebels is some kind of capacity to govern a country in the future. The rebels are, are, are at the moment, they are practiced and experienced in killing people. You know, and the um, people who have practice and experience in governing a country are mostly in Turkey and Paris and London. It's very difficult to understand what happened in Syria without the war in Iraq. Without that invasion, of course. do you of think course. ISIS would have happened in Syria? Of course not. They always told me that themselves. No, no, we, we they said, you, you created us. Do you think in large part they are a creation of the West in terms of the West uh, Indirectly, behavior? indirectly. Indirectly, of course, not directly, not a conspiracy theory, but I mean, it, it in was terms a, of the, was the consequences of the West a, actions. That's right, it was an indirect consequence. It was the, of the... Uh, Yes, certainly ISIS and Jabhat al-Nusra and their power and strength is all a result of our invasion of Iraq. What a lot of people, for example, who supported that war in Iraq, they say, ah, you argue that the Iraq war is an example of what happens when the West militarily intervened. But now you've got Syria, that shows what happens when the West doesn't military, uh, militarily intervene. The c catastrophe in Syria, it's conceivable that could have followed the same course or a similar course without the American intervention in Iraq mm. because there's so much feeling of hatred and resentment against the government there already. So many Iraqis have come into Syria. You know, there, there remains basically no border between Iraq and Syria today. We added fuel to the fire and we made things more dangerous and we continue to make things more dangerous by sending these people tow missiles all the mm. time. I'm not at all persuaded everything would have been good if we had just killed a few more people. Mm. That's the argument of the, of the liberal hawks now. Yeah. Is, must kill just a few more Alawites and, and government people, and that way everything will be more peaceful. I don't accept that argument at all. Because I a lot of people today who supported the invasion of Iraq, and because they realized that they're... Those people are responsible for my torture. Have they reckoned with the fact that they put Americans in danger and have caused Americans to suffer and go through pain? No. They, I, I meet these people sometimes. Hmm. Do they apologize to me for what they did? No. And they said they're they happy. They and said, they're about to come into power again, by the way. Donald Trump is imminently going to become president of the United yes, States of America. Apparently, yes. What are your fears of Donald Trump and the consequences of his foreign policy? I think nobody knows what he is going to do, and he himself doesn't know. He's a, like an improvisational artist, mm -hmm. so he's going to make it up on the fly. I'm confident that he is um, not a rational human being, and so he is going to fly by the seat of his pants. I don't think that he is likely to bomb a Muslim country in the near future because he has made such a point of our mistakes in Iraq. So I think that he, you know, he's capable of bombing some other country, but not um, Iraq or Syria for the time being. He's like skillful at provoking people and inciting hatred and violence among the people he's talking to. I think uh, it's almost certain that he's going to do this. It's what he likes to do. He mm -hmm. just enjoys this. His supporters will use your experience to say this is why we need to crack down and stop Muslims from entering the United States, for example. I think they probably already do. They draw the wrong lesson. A lot of people will leave comments under this video. And this sounds odd, I know, to say this, but I can assure you these comments will come and there will be a Let deluge them. of these comments. <laughs> they will say that you should be angry with Islam, that this is, your treatment is inherent. I think we need to, to Islam. understand Islam more deeply and more carefully and we need to know, um, you know, what, what uh, what verses, what prophecies are important to them at the moment? Mm -hmm. And uh, how are these prophecies and verses exploited by people with an agenda? I don't mean to say that there's not bits in there that speak to certain people at certain times. Uh, there certainly are. However, um, we're talking about a religion with 1.2 billion people mm -hmm. in it. So uh, if a couple guys who are, are really going nuts on guns and um, freedom and lack of police authority in certain places in Iraq, I, I think it's a mistake to impugn the other 1.2 billion members of this religion. But do you think, finally, one day, these people, we will look back at this period, probably with some horror, but they will eventually disappear one day? No, I don't think they will disappear. I think we're going to be with this. Um, they always told me, we're going to be killed. We're not doing this for ourselves. We're doing this for little yeah. Abdul Hamid here. You know, he's four years old. And so they give him the gun, and they give him... Um, you know, the, the religious instruction, and they give him zero secular instruction. So he, he is not at all a citizen of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. He's entirely, you know, in that psychology of Gestalt. He's never known anything but violence and religion. And, and so, no, we're going to be with these people for, for a good long time to come. And, and our best hope is to make peace with them, you know, and to, and to try to be good to them so that they are good to us.
and to ward off the attacks that they are planning now. How do we do that? By having active and positive on the ground intelligence. And how do we do that? By cultivating relationships with the people who are there now. And the only way to cultivate those relationships is by being nice to them. Because by throwing bombs at them, they just hate us. Wow. I mean, you can imagine just going through a quarter of what he experienced and finding it unbearable. And yet, he spoke so eloquently, so courageously about what he went through. So I want to hear your thoughts. Do leave your comments uh, below the video. Uh, this is a fascinating debate, so it'd be great to have a good discussion. Uh, as ever, subscribe. I'll see you next time.